Hi guys, I uh been resting all day. Took a shower even though I don't look like it and uh have a little bit of energy, so I thought maybe I would do another little video about COVID. Um kind of wanted to like explain how the nurse teams work at least in the COVID cardiac critical care that I was in. Um, they were amazing. They were, I just can't even believe these people are doing this for a living night after night after night. So I was admitted to Kodiak, uh, Kodiak, <laughs> cardiac COVID critical department for um, my COVID. It was going into my lungs and I'm a cardiac patient. And so when they brought me in, um, it's a set of three nurses that were assigned solely to me. I had my main nurse, and I, for some reason, I called him the paper nurse, P-A-P-Y-R-E. I saw a sign that the thing that they wear with the big respirator on their head and a big black tube coming down their back to a fan that's strapped around their waist. These people have to wear this their whole, their whole shift. Um, anyways, the main nurse wore that because the main nurse, um, has to get up close and personal with you and, um, well, as close and personal as they can get without you ripping their shit off when you're not breathing right. But, um, I called him my paper nurse because I had seen that they, the acronym or something was similar to that. And I could be completely off cause I was not getting oxygen well. So I was interpreting things weird. And then I had my respiratory therapist, um, and then I had my um, personal tech. And the personal tech's job was to do everything for the nurse and the respiratory therapist. Um, get me water, because the water was sealed, and the nurses and the therapist could not go in the water room. They had to go. It was very important to drink as much water, just so you know. If you get COVID, drink water, drink water, drink water. We're trying to flush this shit through. Um, your digestive tract. I mean, I drank water like I've never drank in my life. Um, but, uh, so I had this team of three. They sat outside in my room. They had a camera on me at all times. If I had any problems, one of them would come in, um, right away. Uh, they worked in four hour shifts. This is how intense this is. Um, I don't know if they moved to a different room, but with me in the critical care, I was told that they were on four hour shifts. Um, then the second shift would come in and overlap for like 15 minutes till they could get everything organized and everyone's on the same page. And then it would rotate again and again to a four hour shift, four hour shift. Um, but, uh, and then I, then there were nurses that I called the soldiers. Um, they wore PPE gowns front and back, an N95 mask with another mask over with a shield, headgear, um, and they seemed to be more like when the nurses needed something done, like, um, they needed to, uh, a patient was, like, really failing, they needed to get oxygen in there, they needed to have, um, physical help, um, these, I would call them the soldiers would show up or when they would transport me from one negative pressure room to a different negative pressure room, they would walk on either side of my wheelchair, um, and would yell COVID positive as we went down hallways. And they would also say it over the speaker and everything. I mean, it was, it was unreal. It was like a movie. They have it down and they're just, they are not into getting this virus anywhere. But, uh, it was pretty amazing to see that um, in my critical care, I had the team of three nurses. And they did an amazing job. I cannot believe that they even got my COVID reversed. Um, I had it in my upper right lung, and then it went fully into my left lung, all the way to the bottom, which is not what you want, because once it reaches the bottom, then you're at risk for your body to try to flush it out and start pushing water in your lungs. I was given remdesivir, which is a controversial medicine that uh, the president authorized, I think, back in May and got 
caught a lot of shit about authorizing it, but the nurses are ecstatic that they have this medicine to use in certain cases. They want other medicines. There's there's ivermectin, there's hydroxychloroquine. Um, basically, the, the nurses and doctors are, are saying, um, give us options. Because when you have someone who is dying in front of you and their oxygen is leaving, and you're seeing them just decline, 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 give us something. I mean, at that point, the patient will try anything course you don't want to jeopardize them if you know it's something that's going to kill them but if if there's something that they could try trust me if if my medicine didn't reverse it I would be saying give me whatever's next whatever's next no puppies I'm two little chihuahuas are gonna get in a fight over here you little couch dogs um anyways you guys just have to realize these nurses and doctors are overburdened. I mean, I can't even imagine what the hospitals are like right now. Um, so wash your hands, wear a mask. Don't be these people that are like, I'm not wearing a mask. That's fine. If, if, if you don't think you're going to get it, whatever, that's your choice. But they're just trying to slow the spread. Because trust me, when you're standing in line at the ER and you're not breathing, uh, there's battles. There's people pushing and shoving. There's, you know, people that are entitled that think that they should get better care than others. And um, just all that, all that stuff you normally see in the ER. Just imagine how bad it is when people can't breathe, when they're not getting air. It's just escalated. And then the nurses are trying to help patients without getting their own gear ripped off of their faces but um stay safe out there people i'm just telling you i washed my hands i used a mask i was actually hiding out in my house for weeks um limiting my exposure to the world doing what i could and i still got it so uh stay safe <laughs>